Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's happening in TV and movies? Well, I'm kind of on a nostalgia wave right now. Okay. You've heard of Childish Gambino? Yes, I have. Yeah, he's done a few good songs, but did you know that he was also in film? Yes, uh, he was uh, in that recent Star Wars movie, the Han Solo movie. He played uh, Lando Calrissian. Exactly. And, you know, he also played in Community. But did you know he also made his own movie? Has he? He made a movie called Mystery Team, actually. Okay. What's that one about? Yeah, so it's about three friends who go around solving mysteries. But, of course, since it's Donald Glover, it's really not that simple. Okay. It's kind of like a coming-of-age movie because... Well, so they're not in a van with a giant dog. <laughs> they're not in a van with a giant dog. Trust okay. me, they're not in a van with a giant okay, dog. Okay, just, just I was wondering how it kind of sat on the Scooby Doo ratio. Okay, I would say it's pretty far. Well, I would give it two Scoobies out of ten. Okay, so that's that's not a lot of Scoobies. No, I can't imagine Shaggy digging through a toilet looking for a ring because somebody lost it inside of a stripper. Oh, yeah, that uh, I haven't seen that episode of Scooby Doo. No, sure. yeah. I haven't either. But you know, it's the future. We might see. It, you know, it uh, it premiered in Sundance. Yeah, and it was such a hit that there was actually some private screenings, leading to like about ninety thousand in profit. Um, and believe it or not, yeah, it got a six point seven on IMDb and fifty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but you know what's coming up? What? October. October is coming up. Spooky season. Yeah, spooky season. And there's a lot of really great horror out there. There is. Um, one of them is the Evil Dead remake, the oh, 2013 one. Oh, boy. Now you're talking my language. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Campbell is Actually, not in Bruce this movie, Campbell. but... <laughs> <laughs> no, he isn't, but... Um, you know, they're thinking about making a sequel to the Evil Dead, the new Evil Dead movie. Okay. Um, that's, that was actually my only problem with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Br the, Bruce is getting up there though. Uh, yeah, he's getting a little older. Yeah. He can't really pull off that physical comedy that he did for like the original Evil De Dead series. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to use his words now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, um, if you've ever heard of Ash versus Evil Dead, that's on Netflix now. And that is Bruce. And that actually has Bruce Campbell in it. Yeah. It, that I've seen that one. It's uh, fantastic. It really kind of brings you back to the days of the Evil Dead 2 movie. Because the yeah. first Evil Dead, they kind of filmed semi-seriously. Mm -hmm. And then they went back and kind of refilmed Evil Dead as Evil Dead 2. And they just had fun with it. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, like, the plots are similar between Evil Dead 1 and 2. But, uh, yeah, they just went back the second time, and it, it's just a, a wild, fun time. Yeah, see, I wish Tommy Wiseau realized that sooner. <laughs> it's okay to be bad, as long as it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, believe it or not, though, there's new movies out there. Are, I mean, it's been, like, with the whole uh, quarantine thing. I mean, it's been really, really slow for... Movies. I mean, I, w I was looking forward to uh, the new Ghostbusters movie that was supposed to come out this summer, but it's not coming out until next year now. Yeah. I, I, I'm not too mad about that. I'm still a little bit leery on Ghostbusters after the, the past few attempts. I mean, they weren't bad. I just, it didn't have uh, Murray in it. <laughs> yeah. That's a, well, he just turned 70. Yeah. Congratulations. Yep. The, the man's turned 70 and I hope he's got another 70 years left in him. For sure. I don't, you know, 140 years of Murray, I, we could do that. I think so. I do, I, as long as he can do that. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of the movie Host? I have not. I've only seen the trailer of it, but I've heard nothing but good. I mean, it's only, it's got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. Yeah. It looks like it's a movie shot on cell phones and through webcams. You see some of that. Now, these days, like it's not all kind of professional camera grade stuff. There's people making like independent and smaller movies and they're just using camera phones. Yeah. So host, it's about six friends who accidentally invite the attention of a demonic presence during an online that assault. Happens. <laughs> yeah, seance. That, that happened to me like three times so far this month. You've been doing a lot of seances. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More so than usual. How many do you usually do? Uh, nine a week. Nine a week? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like a once a quarter kind of guy. Okay. That's, 
how you avoid the demons. Oh, that's what it is. You're running too hot. Too many, too many seances a month. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, I learn something new every day, and that's what I learned. Yeah, you don't want to die. You know. Speaking of weird seances, um, do you ever go on 4chan? <laughs> I, I'm aware of 4chan. Well, 4chan, if you haven't been there, if you really want a real fright, you should go to 4chan. <clears throat> but I used to go on Slash X, which is the paranormal board. And one day somebody posted a file on there. He's saying, hey, this is... This appeared on my desktop all by itself. I mean, obviously he is BSing, right? Oh yeah. But I mean, you know, it's you know, one in the morning. All, I was all by myself in my room, and I'm like, okay, what's what's this barely breathing .exe file he posted? <laughs> so I download it, and uh, by George, it actually ran, and it was a really really creepy game. And it wasn't a virus. It wasn't. Yeah, I can't guarantee that <laughs> part. <laughs> but yeah, it just turned out to be a. A game maker game, which, you know, I kind of scared the pants off of me. Oh, wow. But if you're really in for a fright this October and you're on a budget, definitely go check out some creepy pastas on YouTube. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, the whole internet kind of creepy thing. I mean, it's kind of taken off. Uh, you know, there was the whole Slenderman thing. Oh, yeah. And, and like all that has arisen from like online people like telling stories. It's, it's kind of like how it's always been. Yeah, um, and on one final note, it's not really about film, but S the SCP Foundation. There's there's a lot of uh, videos on YouTube that you should check out. Um, it's kind of creepy. It's definitely lower budget, but if you're into stories with a really deep and rich lore, definitely check out the SCP Foundation. They're also open source, I believe. Like yep. if you want to contribute to a story or use it for uh, even a commercial project, yep. you can. That's right. You just, I'm, I think you just have to clear it. Yep. You just have to clear it with them, and they're usually pretty good. The only time they've ever turned down a project was when they were just being completely ripped off or content was stolen without any credit. So, yeah, just ask. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I've got today. All right. I'll be back with you right after this for some video game news. Oh, we're halfway there. <laughs> oh, oh, living on a prayer. I'm sorry. Welcome back to Media Minute, your headlines and quick times. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about video games. What's going on right now? All right. Uh, not a heavy week for releases, uh, but there's some interesting things going on this week, that's for sure. First game I'm going to talk about is the Dungeon of Nehalbach, colon, Amulets of Chaos from Artifact Studios. It's huh. a turn-based uh, fantasy tactics game. It's a dungeon crawl, classic fantasy and uh, you have a cast of fully voiced, customizable characters, and uh, it's kind of got like a lighthearted humor to it. It makes fun of kind of the fantasy tropes and the dungeon crawling tropes. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's out. It's one of those things, though, where the humor, you'll either get it or you don't. Okay. So the meta score, not that high. It's 60, but the user reviews are much more favorable towards it. Oh, well, what's its, uh, what's its rating? Uh, 60 for the meta score, and I think it's like 8.3 for the user score. Yeah, is it like an E for everyone? Uh, oh, um, I don't think it is. Okay. I don't think it is, because they do drop f bombs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So not necessarily for uh, for the little ones. Not but, for the uh, kitties, no. Okay. One of the big questions that has been going on in PC gaming yep. is, does it run Crisis? 
Now, the new question is, does it run Crisis Remastered? There's Crisis Remastered? Crisis Remastered is out from Saber Interactive. Of course, it's the classic first-person shooter. And uh, you use your nano suit, speed, strength, and firepower to work your way across an open-world environment. Uh, 74 for the Metascore because, uh, you know, it's a remaster, so there's not that much new there. But, uh, you know, it's if you're a fan of Crisis, you might like that one. Is there a video card on the market that can run the, it on maximum? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. Crisis has all, always been known for a, a beast, kind of like pushing the limits for uh, video card systems. Yeah, and I heard it wasn't even like an optimization thing. It was, it just really was that high quality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next up uh, from... He, uh, Next up from Supergiant Games, we have Hades for the PC and Switch. You get to defy the gods of the dead as you hack and slash your way out of an underworld in a roguelike dungeon crawler from the creators of uh, indie hits Bastion and Transistor. It's got a beautiful cartoon art style. The trailer of it looks really, really slick. It's fully animated. And uh, they went, you know, it's a roguelike kind of Diablo-esque experience. Okay. But they focus straight on the single player. There's no multiplayer aspect. So like you can see that polish though, just kind of focusing on the single player. I don't think enough publishers do that these days. Yeah. Well, it worked out for these folks because it's got uh, 93 on uh, Metacritic right now. Wow. Is it, is it a 2D game? It is that uh, kind of isometric yeah. uh, Diablo type view. Yeah. Um, the only other isometric Diablo kind of view game I've ever liked was uh, Path of Exile. Have, Path. You, have you played that one? Yeah, that's a uh, free one online. And I believe some of the original creators of the Diablo, uh, Diablo franchise worked on that one. That's what I heard, yeah. but it's only multiplayer. So Yeah, it's kind of the anti-Hades. Yeah. <laughs> now, N Nintendo is doing some fun stuff with the Mario franchise. Oh, really? What are they doing now? Well, uh, recently released for the Nintendo Switch, it's Super Mario 3D All-Stars. So in one package, you have Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. What? Yeah. Does it have both of Super Mario Galaxies? They adjust the first one. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, they haven't done too much with the graphics. They have been upscaled. And here's a weird kind of thing for it. You can only get it for a limited time. It's only going to be on sale until March of uh, 2021. Why? Aww. That's that's the big question. That's I'm going to have to get a Switch. Yeah, because you get to relive those days on the N64, the GameCube, and the Nintendo Wii. It's three generations of Mario yeah, in one cart. Nintendo has always been good at re-releasing. A, a lot of companies, especially Sony... They always get mad when people emulate and download games online, but those are the same people who don't re-release their games. People want to spend money on it again. And, you know, it's kind of a double whammy with the Super Mario All-Stars because it's even a callback to their original Super Mario All-Stars. Yeah, on the uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah. Well, um, here's the, kind of the downside, or at least the side that people have been kind of uh, complaining about. Uh, the re-releases... But it's priced as like a full new game. So people, uh, you know, if you played the games before, you have to ask yourself, if, is it really worth it? Well, it's it's been upscaled, right? Yeah. And plus you get to play it on your current console. So I I think it would be worth the full price. In my That's just my opinion, though. I mean, reviewers have been pretty good about it. It's uh, sitting at 83 on Metacritic right now. Well deserved. Yeah. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, the Xbox uh, launching the new generation, the Series X and the Series S. And I got to finally see it. It looks like a refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, there's a couple of uh, little bits of console news because uh, last week, uh, the Sony, they announced the release date or the pre-order date. And on the day that they announced that and the prices, they opened up the pre-orders. And of course, everything sold out. In like a couple hours. Yeah, there was no chance. <laughs> no. So they are offering two different consoles. There's the base console with the disk drive. Uh, that's going to run you $629 Canadian. If you get the digital only edition, that's going to be uh, $499. Oh, I was so close. <laughs> uh, so the release date for the actual console, the day, to, day it hits stores, you're not going to be able to find them in stores, but the day it no. hits stores, November the 12th. 
Now, the Xbox, uh, they announced the prices earlier, but they're only releasing the pre-orders today. Now, I checked just before we started our show. Guess what? Those pre-orders are gone. So it doesn't matter what the prices are because you're not picking up anything anyway. Wow. Also, the uh, new Xbox Series uh, X and S, uh, they're coming out on November the 10th, a couple days before the physical PS5 release. And I uh, just want to remind you of the prices again for the base console, five ninety nine for the one with the disk drive, and if you go with the digital, it's uh, three seventy nine. So there's uh, quite a bit of a difference between the digital only for the uh, Xbox Series and the uh, PlayStation, but it's only like thirty bucks in difference between the, uh, the main consoles with the disk drive. You know, I would complain about not having a disk drive, but if I really, if I'm honest with myself, I don't think I've used one in five years. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been going digital only, and, you know, some people like having the disc, though, so I, I can't fault them for that. At least uh, with Sony and Xbox doing this, you have the option. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and don't forget, if you're lining up for the release in November, don't forget to social distance. I know the lineups are going to be around the block if we do that, but better sure. safe than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, and like I said, I don't think... Like anyone will reasonably be able to pick up any of these new consoles until the new year. I yeah. Mean, unless you <laughs> let's got. Be, let's be honest. Yeah, let's be honest. Locally here in Northern Canada, probably not. So, yeah. Okay. Here's a question for you. Okay. How much would you pay for Skyrim? How much would I personally pay for Skyrim? $20. Okay. Well, that that's quite a, a lot lower than what Microsoft paid for ZeniMax. Yeah, they bought Zenimax, which means they own id and they own Bethesda Studios. So they own like the licenses to uh, Doom, Rage, Fallout, and of course, Skyrim. So Todd Howard has done it. He sold Skyrim one more time for $7.5 billion. Holy crap. Yeah. And now it's owned by Microsoft? Now it's owned by Microsoft. I wanted there to be less glitches. <laughs> <laughs> so the big question is now, Yeah. will future releases by like id and bethesda be microsoft exclusives that is the question that's weighing oh, a lot of people oh no so current news as of when we're filming this today it's supposedly going to be done on a case by case beth um, <laughs> case by case bethesda yeah it's, it's going to be case by case so yeah i mean if you buy one console if you buy a playstation i mean there's no guarantee that you'll be able to play like the next iteration of doom or fallout the console wars just got rekindled yeah uh xbox is really like the with the announcement of their prices and what they're doing now like Acquiring other companies, they're really pushing into this new generation of consoles. I'm really excited to see what Sony does. Yeah, we'll see how it all stacks up. And of course, it's going to be uh, a little while before that actually happens because A, those consoles have to get released. Yeah. And B, you got to be able to buy them before you make any judgments. So we're at <laughs> that point right now. That's right. And uh, let's, let's be honest. How many times have you bought a, uh, a brand new console? first generation of that uh, new release and you regretted it later because the price has dropped by $200 and the second revision doesn't break. I always wait until the first price drop. Yeah. That's my kind of personal rule. It sucks in a little way because you do have to wait to play some of those games, but it's usually worth it in the end because the hardware has stabilized yeah. and you get it for cheaper. Yeah. Hardware and software. For sure. Yeah. Well, that wraps up uh, things for me. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this edition of Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And make sure you hit that like button and subscribe.